Hey guys, this is Srini and you're watching Python tutorial videos on my channel Python for Microscopists on YouTube. In today's tutorial, let's continue talking about OpenCV, which is uh, the library primarily dedicated to uh, machine vision type of applications, but has very good tools for image processing, even microscope images, for even microscope images. So uh, in today's lecture, let's just focus on two topics. One is uh, uh, denoising or blurring, and the other one is edge detection. Again, a couple of uh, very important pre-processing operations that you may need to perform if you are interested in uh, image segmentation, for example. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into SPIDER, which is again the IDE that's part of Anaconda distribution. Now, to import OpenCV, just to remind everyone, import CV2. And uh, typically there are three things that I kind of import by default. And let's go ahead and do that. OpenCV, NumPy, because you never know when you need to do some sort of a array manipulations, you know, uh, array math. So uh, we're doing CV2 and NumPy, and the other one is uh, matplotlib. Even though I plan on actually using uh, uh, OpenCV to show images, I may have to plot the histogram, for example, and for that, uh, PyPlot is pretty, uh, pretty useful. So let me go ahead and do that from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. Okay, so these are the libraries that we want, and now let's go ahead and read our image. So uh, the first topic is denoising. So let's import an image that's actually got some noise. I've uh, Google searched for an image and uh, just added some random noise to it. So let's go ahead and use that image. And this is cv2.imread and it's in images and it's called Google. No, I think it's called BSC. I can actually go to my file explorer, look at images and this is BSC underscore Google underscore noise. Okay, BSE Google noisy.jpg and let's go ahead and read it in color again the way we do that is one zero means we are reading the image as a gray level image this is I believe a gray level image to begin with so let's let's go ahead and read it as uh, as one now one of the first uh, let me take a step back like whenever we do denoising we are manipulating the image somehow and how do we do denoising I mean we can either do uh, averaging you know average of a few pixels that kind of minimizes the noise you can do Gaussian blurring like apply a Gaussian filter and then blur it you can do like uh, for example a filter called median whatever process you follow all we are doing is you take a kernel the kernel can be a 3 by 3 uh, matrix for example it can be a five by five matrix, whatever it is. You take a kernel and you convolve it, meaning you kind of multiply it, you know, by progressively moving it on your image. Your image is nothing but a very big matrix or a very big array. Our kernel is a smaller array that we are stepping through the image. So the we can actually define this kernel. If you import or if you use a predefined uh, 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 process, you know, within OpenCV or whatever scikit image, it comes with a predefined kernel, but we can define our own and that method within OpenCV is done via cv2.filter2d. So it's cv2.filter and 2d I believe is uppercase. Okay, we'll figure this out in a second. So this is what we need, but the arguments here is uh, the first one is uh, an image, but then we need to define a, uh, a kernel, okay? So the first one is image, and then uh, uh, let's, let's get to this in a second. So how do we define our kernel? Well, uh, this is nothing but this is the reason why I imported NumPy, because we know how to generate a, uh, a matrix of all ones, okay? So this is done by np.ones, and uh, let's just do five, by five array and then uh, I'm gonna 
convert this, this, this needs to be, I want this to be a float32 type, okay? np dot float32. And the reason why I want this as a float32 and not an integer is we are doing some math to the image. So we want these to be uh, float. And more importantly, the reason I want it to be is because I'm dividing this by 25. Five by five of all ones means I have 25 ones in my matrix. <clears throat> I am normalizing this by dividing it by 25. So all the elements within the matrix add up to one. Okay. You do not want to change the energy of your image, of your original image. So by multiplying it by one, we are not altering the total energy contained within this image. That's the reason why I'm normalizing it by 25 here. If this is a three by three matrix, I would divide this by nine. Okay. So uh, this is our uh, kernel and uh, we are all set actually. So let's actually define, <clears throat> uh, let's, let's go ahead and use this, okay? Uh, let me give a little bit of room there. So uh, we have our image, we have our kernel. So let's just call this our filter, okay? Our filter, uh, I think filter is a built-in term. So let's just use filt underscore 2D, okay? So my uh, 2D filter is nothing but cv2.filter 2D and I have my image and uh, uh, we can look up at the documentation actually, but uh, I need to define my kernel right there, okay? And this is nothing but convolution using the kernel that we have just defined, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and look at the image, cv2.imshow and we know how to look at this and I'm gonna call this Let's actually put both original image and uh, so our original image is img and cv2.mshow and let's call this uh, 2D custom filter, okay? And this is filt2d. And every time you use cv2.mshow, again, cv2. Dot wait uppercase k, okay? wait key and how long do we want to wait until we provide uh, until we provide a few uh, you know until we close it cv2 dot destroy all windows okay so <clears throat> let's go ahead and run this and uh, you see the original image here which is noisy and you see the blurred image or denoised image it's actually not bad it's denoised except we act, let's go ahead and close this, except we are, you know, convolving it with a filter of five by five. Let's go ahead and do three by three and nine. Okay, let's run this and see how the extent of blurring. Actually, this is not bad. It did denoise a little bit, but it also did not blur the image a lot. Okay, so three by three seems to work very well on this specific image. Let's leave our kernel size to three by three for now. And I am going to show you a few other types of filters. The, uh, another type of filter that we have is uh, blur. So see, uh, let's call this blur equal to, it's nothing but cv2 dot blur, that's it. And then we need to just give our uh, image and uh, our input image is called image and then now we need to give what the uh, uh, what the kernel size is, you know, for this image. And I'm I'm cheating here a bit. On the other side, I have the documentation for all of this, so I need to so I can I can make sure you know I do this video in a smooth way. Otherwise, I'll make a bunch of mistakes. Go back and correct them. Okay. So you can also go ahead and cheat. Nothing wrong with that, as long as you cut down your uh, execution time. You know, this is. Uh, it's a good way of learning. So uh, this is uh, a built-in function. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, try to see this image blur and, uh, and let's run this. So this is our blurred image, which also is denoised. This is our original image. And let me move this to this side. And this is the one on the right hand side, I have my custom filtered image. And on the left hand side, this is a blurred image. Although I should go back and see what did I use for my blur? It's not fair to compare five by five. Yeah, let's go to three by three, okay? 
because I was expecting not much difference between these two because blur is nothing but exactly this cv2.filter2d. Yeah, this is nothing but that except here we are defining the kernel size. The kernel size is three by three and it's, it's defining the kernel. Here I defined the kernel and I just gave that kernel as an input here. So let's do this one more time and I should, yeah, on the left hand side I have blur, on the right hand side I have custom filter. They almost look exactly the same, okay? So, but the good thing with custom filter is now I don't have to, uh, I mean, using all ones is the easiest way of doing it, but then you can define a Gaussian kernel. You can define your own Lorenzian type of kernel. If you're good at defining your kernels, then you can define whatever and then actually get the best out of this. So that's why uh, cv2.filter2d exists. In addition to this, we also have a Gaussian blur. Uh, as the name suggests, this is uh, nothing but instead of all ones in the kernel, it uses a Gaussian. A Gaussian is nothing but a bell curve. You know, when you do a, a distribution of random numbers, for example, you end up with this normal distribution, right? So it's almost a Gaussian. It's not exactly a Gaussian, it's almost a Gaussian. So instead of uh, one dimension, if you do that in 2D, the Gaussian looks like a, uh, a mountain, okay, a hill. So that's what Gaussian blur actually does. The central values are uh, larger and the values taper off as you go away from the center. But when you add all the numbers, they should add up to one again. And by doing Gaussian blur, uh, it does take care of this. So cv2.dau, uh, no, I think it's uppercase. Again, that's why I'm cheating here because I do not want to make these little mistakes. Gaussian uh, blur. And the way we do uh, here is obviously, what are we blurring? We are blurring our image. Yeah, by how much are we blurring? By five and also uh, a zero. And you can actually go ahead and look at documentation what zero uh, means. So uh, what is it saying? Undefined Gaussian, okay, that's fine. Uh, oh, sorry, equal to, okay? So let's also add Gaussian blur down here so we can actually look at what it is, uh, how it looks like, Gaussian blur, and what did we call this? And before looking at this image, let's also, well actually let's, uh, let me also define one more. Now, all up, uh, until this point, you know, Gaussian blur and everything, I believe even Gaussian is uh, called a linear uh, uh, convolution, you know, uh, process. Now, there is a nonlinear process, so, uh, and usually these nonlinear ones retain edges. So one uh, of those is median, the other one is called bilateral. So let's look at median and bilateral in a minute, but let's run these so you can see how Gaussian looks like. There you go. This is our regular blur. We looked at that, and this is our Gaussian blur. Much better than uh, these other ones, yeah? But they all look pretty much the same. You know, uh, again, uh, which kernel did I use for Gaussian? Again, five by five. If I actually do three by three, it probably looks better than uh, the other two. So let's go ahead and run this one more time. So this is my Gaussian blur, and this is my 2D custom filter. It's tough to tell the difference, you know? Although Gaussian, uh, looks slightly better to me when it comes to edges. So uh, let's see if our median filter does any better job than Gaussian. Uh, median is a good uh, option if you want to do, if you want to retain uh, edges. So that I already mentioned that. So this is called CV2 dot, uh, again, let me go ahead and cheat. Uh, median blur, uh, okay median uppercase B. Okay, and we are doing that on our image and our kernel size, let's actually keep it three. You just need to say three. You don't need to do three by three. So let's go ahead and also look at this median. We call it median blur. I like to call this median filter because we are filtering in a way, we're filtering the image. So let's just call this median underscore blur. Let's go ahead and print all of these or show all these images and median showed up here. And let's go ahead and compare median and Gaussian. I don't know if you can tell from the video, but Gaussian seems to be a bit more blurred than median. You see median retained all the edges. They all, uh, uh, I mean, this is the original image, by the way. If you compare original and median, that's not bad. 
I mean, the edges are sharp here, the edges are relatively sharp over there, and most of the noise seems to be gone. Okay, so uh, let's stop showing other images uh, right now. So let's actually delete the 2D custom blur and also Gaussian blur. We understand what they do. Uh, let me go ahead and add one more. One of my favorite filters, bilateral uh, blur. I said one of my favorite because this is very good for noise removal and retain the edges, even better than medium blur. Let's hope to see, uh, see that here. CV2 and what do we call it by lateral? I think F is again. I do not have that uh, here. So what do I do? Um, let's go ahead and do image. And again, for uh, to understand the parameters, you can actually go and uh, you know search online for what the input parameters actually mean. This is typically the kernel size. This can be the patch size. You know how fast you want to move on the images. So each filter has its own way of dealing with uh, uh, the kernel and uh, the parameters basically are one way of, uh, uh, I mean, the way you're telling exactly how you want the filtering to be done. So uh, let's call this bilateral and this is bilateral underscore blur. Uh, I think we got everything okay. Let's go ahead and run this. And uh, here is the bilateral and original image. The noise is not that much cleaned as you see compared to the original. Maybe we can play with the parameters and see, but the edges are much sharper compared to the median filter. One thing I'm not gonna show right now uh, is something called non-local means filter. I, in fact, I didn't even know, uh, I've never looked up for non-local means filter on uh, OpenCV. I know it actually exists in uh, Scikit image, so I keep using the one from Scikit image. Uh, so, and uh, I have covered that in one of my previous videos anyway, so I'm not going to cover that uh, uh, in, in this specific tutorial. But uh, again, the name is non-local means filter, okay, NLM. Does an amazing job filtering microscope images, denoising microscope images, and yet retaining the texture, because texture is very important in microscope images. Uh, no need to mention that. Okay, so these are various uh, denoising or blurring, uh, uh, you know, uh, functions. Now let's actually look at uh, an edge detection, uh, an edge detection function. So uh, in fact, let's uh, only look at, again, there are a lot of uh, different choices if you look at scikit image, which I already covered anyway. So I'm going to just show you one of the ones that I probably did not cover in scikit image, which is canny edge detection. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the image, and I'm also going to leave the, these print uh, or im show statements right there. So let's uh, read a uh, because we are going to do edge detection. Let's go ahead and look at uh, an image called neuron. Okay, uh, and then uh, zero, and let's go ahead and show original image first, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, this is nothing but our image. So let's show the original image and this is what I'm talking about. This is obviously a microscope uh, image and it's a neuron and a whole bunch of uh, lines or, you know, if you're a biologist, you know the technical term synapses, I guess, you know, or axons, I don't know the difference, but anyway, uh, the, a, a bunch of lines, you know, from image processing point of view, streaks uh, going from this neuron. So uh, let's just do let's just do uh, edge detection. So it's nothing but edges equals CV2 dot uppercase C canny. Okay, and uh, what do we want to do? Our image. And again, uh, you can look up uh, the parameters, but uh, if this is nothing but the minimum value for canny is 100, the maximum is 200. So let's see how the image looks like. You can play with that. This is nothing but your minimum and maximum values, okay? And now let's just show our canny, uh, our edges image right here. It, this is it, just one line, and that does the edge detection. And uh, it looks exactly like original image. That is because I'm looking at original image. Okay, so let's look at edges, and now there you go. 
So it kind of detected this hard edges where the transition takes place. Okay, in this case, we have the neuron right there, and then there is a very big change in gray level uh, from the from this uh, from this neuron, uh, you know, to the surrounding to the background. So this is one way. Uh, again, when do you use this? It completely depends on your type of uh, image and what the information you're trying to extract out of this image. So uh, these are again a couple of uh, pre-processing. Uh, uh, operations that you could do uh, again leading up to image segmentation or object detection whatever you want to do you know further image processing let's uh, extend this uh, let's look at a couple more in pre-processing operations in a, in our next video and possibly get into image thresholding and maybe segmentation thank you very much for watching this video again please do not forget to subscribe to this channel uh, which keeps me motivated to make more such videos and uh, uh, and and teach you guys, you know, uh, whatever I know when it comes to Python image processing. Thank you very much.